Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's 12 o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a Q&A. Now, this is where I take all the questions that you've asked over the course of the week, and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. So first of all, thank you very much for watching the Q&A. Thanks for sticking with us at Magic TV all week. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget a couple of things. Uh, we typically film these on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So if you want to make sure that you guaranteed to get your question asked, then make sure you ans uh, ask it in the comments down below before sort of choosing day at the absolute latest. If I miss your question, I'm very sorry. It's nothing personal. I will get to it the following week. Also, I tend to be pretty spontaneous when it comes to the uh, questions that are asked, and uh, I read through it and give you my kind of raw and filtered uh, answer to the question. If there's something that I think needs a longer video, I will get to that um, relatively soon thereafter. With that in mind, there's a ton of questions. These things seem to, seem to be getting longer every single week. Uh, so there's a load of questions. I'm going to try and run through them as quickly as I can. Uh, I will say one more thing, which is for everybody that's asked about my health, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm feeling better. I still have the cellulitis, but it is massively reduced. Uh, I'm now on the final week of antibiotics. This is week four. I'm on the final week of antibiotics. And for the first time, I'm feeling more like myself. So uh, thanks for all of your concern and for all of uh, the comments that you, uh, you left asking how I was feeling. I really appreciate that. But with that all being said, it's time. Let's get into this week's Q&A. So the first question is from Jonah Berg. And Jonah says, what's the best boon writer? What's the best boon writer? Now, if you guys don't know what a boon writer is, another word for it is a thumb writer or a nail writer. It's um, uh, used a lot by mentalists. The idea is it sits on your thumb or your nail and you use it to secretly send a message. So, for example, I might be holding a business card and I might have somebody name a two digit number. Uh, I've told them that I've wrote something on this business card and then I've got my boom writer there so that I can use that to write down the number that they name and I can turn it over. It's fantastic. You don't see a lot of people using boom writers or thumb tip writer, thumb writers or anything like that. The best one I've ever found was the Super Sharpie by Magic Smith. Now, if you don't know what the Super Sharpie is, it's basically, think double cross. It's a Sharpie, but instead of the stamp at the end that's used to make the cross, it's actually a self-inking um, thumb writer and it sticks in the same way as double cross does to your thumb so the whole idea is that you can take out a uh, take out a pen it writes as a normal pen you could take a business card for example and pretend to write something on there and then as you put the pen down or you put the pen away or you put the pen into uh, you know the other hand or whatever you steal the uh, you steal the gimmick off you then take the thing that you're going to be writing on, you hold it, you get whatever information you want, you use the thumb writer, you turn it round, it's correct, but it's written in Sharpie ink because the actual gimmick inks itself from the same ink barrel that's making the Sharpie work. Um, so it looks like it's written in Sharpie, it looks really good, and at the end you just take the pen back, put the thing back in, just like Double Cross, and you put it in your pocket. So for me, uh, to answer your question, Jonah, it's the Super Sharpie by Magic Smith. That's the one that I go for. They do a mini version, which you can hang on your keychain, and they actually do a big version as well. Okay, so the next question is from Sean Angertrack, and Sean says, question, most of us know about the big magic suppliers, Penguin, Murphy's, Vanishing Ink, etc. Can you recommend some creators who only sell their products directly from their site? Uh, I bet there's some real gold out there that no one knows about because it's only available from the creator's website. Thanks. Absolutely. Let me give you a few uh, a few names of people whose stuff I like. You've got Justin Miller. Most of Justin Miller's creations bought out uh, in very limited numbers. Not the stuff that he puts out through Illusionist, but a lot of his stuff is bought out in very limited numbers. And it's sold exclusively to his mailing list. He doesn't even, a lot of the time, get it up on his website uh, because it sells out as soon as he, he does a mail out. Uh, and Justin is a creative, powerhouse he really is a tour de force uh, legend as far as I'm concerned so uh, Justin is a great guy get on his mailing list a lot of the time uh, these smaller independent uh, creators that don't put their stuff out through bigger companies um, the best way to actually find out what they've got coming out is by putting yourself on their mailing list um, so that's the first person I would say uh, David Jonathan is great now David Jonathan puts a lot of stuff out through big companies 1914 Penguin Murphy's uh, but he also brings out tricks directly through himself as well. And if you go on his website, you'll know when, uh, like one of the best tricks that I thought from last year was Toucan. I thought that Toucan was amazing. That didn't go out through any magic company. It went out just through David Jonathan's website and it was a fantastic trick. 
Um, David Loosely, Dave Loosely is another guy. So Dave Loosely, uh, you might know him from working with Alakazam, is, a, is an instructor on the Netrix. Dave's a really amazing guy, but Dave's exactly the same in that uh, now when he creates and releases magic, he does it directly through himself. Uh, and he doesn't put it out through a magic company. So uh, Dave Loosely is great. Chris Congreve is perfect uh, example of somebody like this. So Chris, um, you know, when Chris releases a book, he might eventually put it in Murphy's, um, but he'll he'll advertise it to his mailing list first and foremost. Uh, and same with tricks. Like uh, I just saw Chris lecture at. Uh, uh, the Rendezvous Magic Convention in Paris, and it was fantastic. I hung out with him all weekend. Some of the stuff that he had was brilliant, and he put stuff out through uh, big companies, but not all the time. Uh, other people, Nicholas Mavreses is a great guy. He puts a lot of stuff out through big companies, but also he's got some incredible stuff that goes out through his own website. So Nicholas Mavreses is a great person. Um, I'm going to miss people. Blake Voigt is somebody that you should really look into as well. Um, some of Blake's stuff only goes through his website and won't necessarily go out through Murphy's. He does put some stuff like his Acro Index through Murphy's, but a lot of the stuff just goes out directly. Um, John Carey is another example of somebody who you might want to look into. John's a really creative guy. He brings out stuff through Alakazam, but a lot of his books, a lot of his tricks come out directly through them. Um, Steve Della um, has some nice stuff, some really nice stuff. Obviously, if you've seen the Night Flight deck, it's brilliant. Um, and Steve's stuff really only goes out directly through Steve. He does, again, work with big companies, but a lot of the stuff he comes out with uh, will just go out to his mailing list. Also, Genuine Magic, Thomas Maloney from Genuine Magic. Uh, he's a really great guy. He's got some wonderful ideas with wallets, some wonderful ideas with, uh, with leather work. He's got some really nice product, and that really just goes through him directly. It doesn't go into Murphy's or Penguin or Vanishing Ink. Um, that's probably... Uh, not anywhere near a complete list, uh, but it'll give you a good idea to start. Um, and then you can kind of move on from there. But uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, so the next question is from Divi Rayu. And Divi says, hi, I came to watch your show at the Rugely Rose Theatre and I loved it. Thanks, man. I know this is possibly unreasonable ask, seeing as you don't even know me. But if you do another event like that or generally another show anywhere where there's a lot of magicians collab, could I please perform in it? If you say yes, I'm more than happy to send you stuff I've done before and tell you what tricks I do so you can get to know me first and what uh, and that I'm actually good at magic. I'm only 16, haven't had much exposure. This would be great for me, but of course, I completely understand if the answer's no. You know what, Divi? I like working with, with new magicians and we get, you know, but in order to be on that bill, uh, you have to be a uh, part of really a part of my entertainment company, Slightly Unusual, or somebody I know personally. So here's an idea. Why don't you, um, why don't you send an email uh, to info at slightlyunusual.co.uk. Mark it for the attention of Craig and Matt. Matt's kind of over Slightly Unusual. Uh, mark it for the attention of Craig and Matt and send us a couple of links of you performing um in a real world situation send us a couple of links of you performing and then what we'll do is we'll ring you up and we'll have a chat maybe even bring you in the office and and speak about getting you in slightly unusual uh with a view to getting you on the next show that we do so uh, if you like that idea drop an email i'm going to be out the country for a week or so so it might not be uh getting back to you straight away but we will get back to your promise okay so the next question is by jonah berg and jonah says what are your top three sankey dvds Man, DVDs. Now we're going back in time a little bit, aren't we? Everything is downloads these days. Uh, top Sankey DVDs. So, uh, right, so the Sankey Sanders Sessions, uh, which was a double DVD set, was fantastic. Now, the Sankey Sanders Sessions was um, uh, Jay Sankey and Richard Sanders basically locked in a room, locked in a hotel room for a week, and they just filmed each other doing some absolute crazy magic. The Sankey Sanders Sessions were really good and uh, um, Jay Sankey and, and Richard Sanders are two of my favourite magicians and some of the stuff that they did in there was brilliant. Uh, the next one would be, I think he called it the Secret Sessions, it was a two volume thing, it was like a blue cover, I'm sure it was the Secret Sessions and again that was brilliant, that was really really good, a lot of underground stuff that he hadn't actually put out before um, and some really great impromptu card magic there as well so that was really good um and then let me think of one more there's so many to pick from um i'm not going to say the lnl dvds because even though they're brilliant that's kind of a cop out um i'm gonna go 
with real world Sankey. So he put out a, uh, a lot of Jay Sankey's stuff is just performing to camera, but with real world Sankey, he was performing in a bar or a restaurant. And uh, you saw live performances of a lot of those routines. And I remember that's the first time that I learned his uh, routine with a thumb tip and Tyvek paper signature changing places i can't remember what it's called but you know it's brilliant so those are the three that's what i'd say uh real world sankey secret sessions and the sankey sanders sessions all three of those were brilliant uh he probably has got them as downloads on his site now so if you want to check out any of those go check them out at sankeymagic.com okay so the next question is from justin hutchins and justin says hi craig hope you're feeling better now do you have any recommendations on where i can find good akito box routines other than david roth I came across Boston boxes, slot boxes, and other ones, but I just want a plain Akito box routine. Thanks. Um, the original Stars of Magic, Vernon, uh, the original Stars of Magic had a great Akito box routine that was really, really good from memory. Doug Brewer has some great stuff on coin boxes. It was a book. I'm sure it was. Uh, Doug Brewer, coin box magic. Let's see if I can figure this out. Uh, coin box killers there you go it's on his website uh, and you can order it directly from him there we go um, so let's find it here we go is it in stock by the way unexpected visitor which he's got in stock his dvds are brilliant um, half and half that was really good He's got so much good stuff. Here are coin box killers. Stand up routines for the coin workers favorite prop by Doug Brewer. Uh, each one of these routines is unique, uh, has a unique need or presentation built into them. For example, the first three routines, Wild E. Quixote coin box, translocated coin box and the flying stupendos are my special occasion routines. A little longer in performance and may require a close up pad, but they kill. The next route at routines, Brass Trio and Invisible are my two copper one silver routines for the coin box. The two routines after that are Fidget Simplified, Okito and Cheeto, uh, and use three coins, different types of coins. After that, three walk around routines, Exporter, Virtual Revisited and Stand Up Through Hand. Um, and there's a progressive assembly as well. Wow, loads of stuff. And then Promoter and Rice Surprise. There's tons of stuff on there. I That is a great DVD. Um, and you can get it directly from Doug's website, which is dougbrewermagic.com. And they are showing as being in stock. So I would recommend that. Doug Brewer is one of my favorite magicians. And as I say, while you're there, pick up The Unexpected Visitor. Um, because The Unexpected Visitor is brilliant. So there's that. And then I do believe, haven't Copeland Coins got some fantastic Copeland Coins? I'm sure they've got some great Akita Box stuff. Let me just check. I know they sell the best Akita boxes, but let's have a look and see what we've got here. Shop. Here we go. Bear with, bear with, bear with. Um, okay, yeah, so they have got some really cool stuff. So I remember looking at this and thinking it was great. They've got Akito Fly. Um, three beautiful new routines. Uh... Okito Fly. Experienced magicians know that getting strong reactions, you can't go wrong with the classic of magic. Uh, three routines to take your magic to the next level. A Keto Fly, an in and out style routine, which combines three fly with a Keto box. Brass Portal, um, which is a purse frame routine. And What Box. Uh, so three routines there, which is really cool. All designed for strolling. And uh, that is great. And that's Rue. Rue's really good. Um, and then he's got another thing as well, I believe, called Brass Class. Let me see if I can find that on there. There it is, Brass Class. Hey. Okay, so Brass Class. Uh, this was Rooster's debut release to the Magic community. Um, and forget about the old classic tabletop only performance with coin boxes. In Brass Class, a teaching video download, you'll learn to perform coin box magic in the hands of the spectators in a walk around setting. Great for strolling gigs, house parties, weddings, cocktail parties, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, yeah, um, both of those are brilliant. Um, so, there's a few sources. And if you want to see more, I did a video on my YouTube channel a while ago called The Hows and Whys of Coin Box Magic, where I went through a bunch of different sources for Coin Box Magic. And also, there's some stuff on the Netflix, although I am planning on uploading more of my original Coin Box work in the coming weeks and months. So, hopefully, that answers your question, gives you a few sources of where you can go. 
Okay, so the next question is from David Blaine, and David says, hello, hello, David. I was wondering if you use mental photography deck, and if you do, what your routine patter is. I rarely see anyone, any, any performances from anyone with this deck, or is there, um, or if there is, it's always the same thing. Thanks. Yes, in fact, here's a little scoop for you. Um, towards the end of the year, I'm doing a project, like the Cheeky Project, like the... Um, uh, like the, uh, you know, the Beyond Stebbins project, the Visible project. I'm doing a project all about the mental photography deck and tons of different uses for it. So how you can actually use it in a completely different way to what anybody else uses it for. Uh, it's not going to be probably coming out until the end of the year. Uh, and leading up to that, I'll probably be sharing a few of my performances with it on Magic Live. Uh, but you are right, it's a criminally underutilized deck. There's very few people that do anything with it. And my plan for bringing this out is to try and show people, just like I did with Visible, um, I want to try and show people that the mental photography deck actually has a lot of other uses beyond what the main routine is. And uh, yeah. Um, there's a lot you can actually do with it. So it's, I'm not going to show you anything now because, you know, I want to, I want to release this stuff and some of the performances nearer the actual project coming to fruition. Uh, but yeah, it is coming and it is coming at some point in the future, but I will be doing a project all on the mental photography deck. Okay, so the next question is from Pratek Coley, and Pratek says, Hey Craig, love your channel. Thanks, buddy. I've purchased EDC and the ed editable PDFs are great. Thank you. I was thinking of combining it with Extreme Burn 2.0, doing receipts first, and then switching to the receipts for Extreme Burn 2.0 gimmick and changing them to banknotes. You know, you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, you'd have to be very careful because one's very much a mentalism theme trick, while the other one is more of a magic theme trick. But if you play the mentalism off as more kind of mental magic, and then you say, hey, I knew what you were thinking of, but you know what? How do I pay for it? Boom. Then that could work really well. Anyway, you've got a question. Um... Uh, what <laughs> most versatile gimmick apart from a thumb tip, according to you? I mean, it's a great question. And I do typically say thumb tip is, is one of the best gimmicks that you can go for. Uh, there's tons of great gimmicks. There really are. Um, I mean, it depends on the type of magic that you're into. Arguably, if you're a coin magician, you'd probably say a shell or you'd say a flipper or maybe a split coin or something like that. If you're a card magician, you'd probably say a double backed card. I mean, there is so much... There is so much you can do with the double back card. It's almost not funny. So a double back card is a great thing for a card magician. Um, if you're just a, you know, if you're a close up magician, I think that a pull is fantastic. Specifically a raven. If you've ever seen uh, Nick Lacopo perform with a raven, um, he, there's nobody that does it better than him. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. It looks like real magic. And every time I see him deming the raven, I'm like, oh my God, I've got to get one of those. I have to start using it again because it looks so good. Nick makes it look fantastic. On that subject, I think I've spoken about this before, but a top it is a fantastic gimmick. If you do a lot of magic where you're wanting to switch decks or switch objects or something like that, um, that's a fantastic thing to go for. You look at uh, David Penn and he recently bought out... Um, uh, uh, the Magnetic 8-Ball and the Inversion Holder. Both of those are fantastic gimmicks. But realistically, at the end of the day, it's what you are, what, what type of performer you are. So, for example, if I asked Ryland what your favourite gimmick is, he would probably say a cube shell or something to do with Rubik's Cubes, because Rubik's Cubes is his type of magic. Uh, a lot of the stuff I do is coin magic. So if you asked me, I'd probably say a coin shell or a flipper coin or something like that. So it's really down to the individual. It really is. I would say that one of my favourite gimmicks to carry around with me is chop. The pen that you get with chop is capable of so much more than the chop routine. And if you've got chop, you'll know some of the stuff that I put on the project. But you put that pen in your back pocket, you've got an impromptu holder. You have the pen with you and you've got a magnet detector. You can give somebody a strong magnet to hold in their hand, hidden in a coin or something. And you can actually feel that through their hand using the chop gimmick. There's so much that chop will do beyond what um it, you know it is is done with it so i'd say chop is a very versatile gimmick to carry around with you as well so yeah hopefully that answers your question maybe okay we've got another question from pratek Kohli, and pratek says if you had only 100 dollars to make a magic related purchase what would you buy if you had only 100 dollars to make a magic related purchase what would you buy and again it very but just like your previous question it very much depends on the person that's got the hundred dollars right so for example if it's someone new into magic 
I would maybe consider getting a really good book or a couple of really good books. Um, uh, you know, get the Card College uh, series or get as many of the Card College series as the $100 will actually allow you to get. But that would only work if you're relatively new into magic and you're wanting to get a um, and you're wanting to get, you know, good at card magic. If you're not, that might not be the one you want to go for. If you're wanting to, like, become a coin magician, for example, and you're an established magician, but you don't do any coin magic and you want to start doing coin magic, well, I'd say maybe get yourself, like, the uh, the Metal series by uh, by Eric Jones through uh, Illusionist. That would be a great thing to go for. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to just get, you know, more knowledge and more experience, more tricks under your belt, I might even, you know, I'm a bit biased here, I might even say grab a year's subscription to the Netflix or something. And, and, you know, you can get a year's subscription, I think. We're just doing a special offer on the site. I think you're going to be able to get a year's subscription if you book a year in advance on the bronze level. It, it reduces it down. You get, like, two months free or something. Um, so, you know, you could get that for just over a, just over $100. Um, if you are wanting to get into stage magic, um, I, I, I would consider maybe looking around for a really good stage trick. But again, that very much depends on the type of performer you are. I could say get Venom Cube, for example, because I know that kills on stage. But if you don't do cube magic and that cube magic doesn't work for you, then that might not work. And I think one of the problems that magicians have, especially when they go to magic conventions, is they see something and they're like, oh, my God, I've got to buy that. I want that for myself. They don't think through what that actually is. They don't think through, OK, um, will that fit me? Will that fit my character? Will that fit my persona? Will that fit me? They don't think that. What they think is they just go, I want that. A lot of the time because they want the secret. And we buy tricks, and I've done it many times. We buy tricks and end up, the reason it ends up in the bottom drawer is because I haven't thought through ahead of time whether that would fit me. Yes, I want to learn how to do that amazing trick that I've just seen that guy demo. But realistically, is there a place for it in my act? Is there a place for it in my performance? Or do I do something similar? So, for example, Ambitious Card is an amazing trick. If I saw somebody at a convention doing an ambitious card that was ridiculously clean, like the card went into the deck and came to the top, super clean, absolutely amazing, and I was fooled by it, I'd probably buy it because I want to know how it's done. In reality, would it make its way into my ambitious card routine, which is already like six or seven phases long, and I'm already really happy with? Probably not. That money would probably be better spent on something that I don't do or something to help me develop. You know, as a, you know, get a book on scripting or a book on show business or a book on how to win friends and influence people or a book on how to market yourself. You know, there's many different things that you can do, but it very much depends on what you're looking to get out that hundred dollars. And that's a question that really, unfortunately, only you can decide. So the next question is Sean with Multi Magician. And Sean says, hi, by the way, hi, Sean, how you doing? Hi, Craig. Several weeks ago, I sent you an email in regards to a trick. I'm working on, which was Netrix team, but wondered if you had time to look at it. I don't think I saw it, mate. Or if I did, I didn't realise. It's based on Steve Deller's will to read. Instead of objects, it's poster cards, and the predictions all contained within a Himba wallet, all themed on what I predicted. I will watch, you will watch, and what nobody will watch. Hope that explains the concept. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. I'm going to look through my email. Send it again, Sean. Give me a call. Give me a call. You've got my number, I think, haven't you? If you haven't, um, just send me a message on Facebook or something. But give me a call. I'd love to talk you through it, talk it through with you. It sounds great. Uh, I don't think I saw the email. When I jump off this, I'll have a look at it. But if I haven't got back to you before you're seeing this, whenever you see this, just, just give me a call or drop me a message on Facebook or call me on Facebook. Okay, so the next question is from Chris Ash. Hope you're well, Chris. And Chris says, your wisdom is much appreciated. Thank you, buddy. This week's question, I have read conflicting descriptions on how to purse a coin. When pursing a coin, do you prefer or recommend joints or fleshy contact with the coin? By purse, do you mean purse palm? I think you mean purse palm, right? Um, um, probably best to use a half dollar here. Hang on. Have I got a half dollar? I normally have a half dollar in my pocket because I'm a coin guy. Yes, I do. So purse palm is a little bit like that. So I, I grip it here between the edges of the forefinger and the middle finger. So that's kind of how I grip it. Uh, purse palm is great. I remember the first person I saw use purse palm is Derek Dingle. And he had this really nice coin to cross where he was like rubbing their hands and they couldn't feel anything. And then all of a sudden a coin appeared and uh, you know, it was very, very nice. But yeah, that's, that's how I purse palm a coin, um, just like that. So it's kind of more towards the edge 
of the forefinger and the ring finger. Uh, I gotta be honest, I don't really use it for much. There's one routine I use purse palm for, um, but for that subtlety, it's great. You know, if you can get the coin into purse palm relatively easily, which to be honest, from, from finger palm, getting it into purse palm is not a problem with one hand. Then you've got this really nice moment where, you know, you can kind of, they can feel that there's nothing there. And then all of a sudden, a coin appears it looks great because they just it feels like you can feel the whole hand it's uh, it's quite deceptive and then boom the coin just appears so there's a lot you can actually do with it but in answer to your question um yeah that's that's how i palm it so hopefully that helps so the next question is again from chris ash and chris says second question this week anytime mate you can ask as many questions as you want do you have any published work using the Ramsey stack other than with the cylinder and coins routine? Yes, I do, actually. In fact, at some point later this year, I don't know when, but at some point later this year, I'm going to do a hows and whys of um, the Ramsey stack. And I'm actually planning on doing uh, a few uploads to Netflix on various different routines with it. Because there's a lot more that you can do with that other than the cylinder and coins. And it's a little bit like the invisible deck and, and, and the memorized deck. Everybody tends to use it for the same thing. Maybe not necessarily the memorized deck, but definitely the invisible deck. Everybody tends to use it for the same thing, right? They tend to use it for cylinder of coins. And it makes sense because cylinder and coins is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful routine. But if you can do it for, um, if you can use that, um, uh, that gimmick for something else, well, then it's more versatile. And there's an awful lot you can actually use it for. So, yes, that's a long uh uh, that's a long way of saying, yes, I do have other routines with it. And uh, at some point when I find time, I'll actually uh, put those up online so uh, and share them with the community. But they've never been published before. Okay, so the next question is from Matt Peters. And Matt says, will you ever release a shell for Keymaster? That would be cool. There's a lot of other stuff that's coming with Keymaster. Um, the, the relaunch of Keymaster through Penguin has been such a massive success. And so many people have said to me that it's now their everyday carry, which is fantastic. And I honestly thought that when I bought out Keymaster, that would be the final word. But there's a lot of stuff that we are going to be doing with Keymaster moving forward. So there's a lot of other uh, add-ons. So it doesn't take away from the original Keymaster, but there's going to be a lot of add-ons that are coming. And in fact, um, I'll be going over to Penguin at some point in the next month or two to film some of those. Um, some of the stuff is shell-like. It's not necessarily a shell per se, but it is something that's going to uh, allow you to do an awful lot more with Keymaster than you possibly could imagine. Um, so... Yeah, I can't, I'm sorry I'm being a bit vague, but th there are add-ons to Keymaster that will be coming at some point, probably within the next year. Okay, so the next question is from Sam Fuller Magician, and Sam says, love the videos as always, thank you very much. Uh, who do you wish would write a big book of magic? Right, um, let me give you some names. Lloyd Barnes, I think. I'd love to see Lloyd Barnes do a big book of magic. Uh, also, Jeff Hobson. I don't think Jeff Hobson's ever written a book that I'm aware of. And with his experience and uh, knowledge on on everything when it comes to comedy magic, I think his book, his a book he wrote would be absolutely amazing. Um, who else? Who else? Um, on the subject of uh, John, uh, on, the, on the subject of uh, Jeff Hobson, sorry, uh, let's go old school, the Carnival of Wonders, and talk about Mark Kalen. I think Mark Kalen would be a fantastic person to write a book. I would just read a book of his stories and the stuff that he's achieved. I would absolutely read that. That would be a great book. Um, who else? Um, Kyle Purnell, David Jonathan, Nicholas Mavresis. Uh, I think the three of those have enough material to each write a book that would be absolutely incredible. And uh, I know he's written a book recently, but it's been about a very niche subject. I'd love to read a big book of magic written by Matthew Wright. Uh, that would be very, very cool. That would be really cool, actually. Um, is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Uh, Mario Lopez. I, I, I would love to read a book on Mario Lopez. His approach to magic is just brilliant, and I'd love to read a book of his. And Tobias Dostal as well. I think that he'd have a great uh, book in him. So there you go. There's a few people. Um, I don't know if they all will write a book. Maybe a couple of them have written a book, and I don't even know about it. But uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the list to start you with of people I wish would write a book. Okay, so the next question is from Jonah Berg, and Jonah says, what do you think of the Pete Turner Masterclass? I haven't watched it yet. Obviously, I've got it because I'm a Masterclass subscriber, but I haven't actually watched it yet. I'm planning on watching it. Um, I, I've got a lot of traveling to do in the next week or so. I'm going to download it, and I'm going to watch it 
when I'm traveling. I'm going to have at least two or three days of traveling. So I plan on watching it then. I know it's going to be amazing and I know it's going to work. It's probably going to make me want to just delve into propless mentalism like it always does every time I'm around. Uh, every time, every time I'm around Pete Turner, uh, I end up just wanting to, you know, hear all about uh, everything that he does because he's a genius. But uh, but yeah, I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a review. Maybe, maybe Pete Turner will be the first masterclass that I actually review from Vanishing Inc. Okay, so the next question is from Adrian Suter, and Adrian says, Hi Craig, I love the classic Symphony of the Rings by Di Vernon. It's great. By the way, Symphony of the Rings is a linking rings routine. A lot of people consider it the classic linking rings routine, um, which uses six rings. Yes, it does. You said on several occasions that you perform Pop Hayden's linking ring routine with four rings. I do. However, I've recently rewatched Pop's routine, and... My routine is actually quite a lot different. I've deviated from it. I think I originally started with Pop's routine and then over the course of like six or seven years, it's changed into something completely different. There's one moment that's the same. Everything else is totally different and I didn't even realise uh, until I rewatched Pop's routine. So yeah, but Pop is absolutely amazing. It's still the, the Linking Rings routine that I recommend. Uh, do you know of any routine that combines the two? Um, it would need seven to nine rings altogether, but I have phases where only some of the rings are used. No, 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 I don't really. I remember watching Jeff Hobson live. Um, when was it? I've seen him live quite a few times. I think it was when he was performing at the IBM in the UK back in like 2008 or something. Um, maybe. But I remember him doing a linking rings routine there and it was just a really funny linking rings routine. And he was he had like multiple rings and he was getting tons of shapes and they were linking together in loads of different shapes. And it was really, really funny. I don't know if Jeff Hobson has published his linking rings, but that is the only thing from that whole convention. And it was an incredible convention. Michael Finney and uh, um, Jeff Hobson, there's a bunch of people there. But that's the only thing that I think I can remember uh, that really stuck in my head. His linking rings routine was brilliant. Um, outside of that, I don't really know many other stage routines that require that many rings. Um, but do me a favour and go and look into Jeff Hobson's linking ring routine because that is one of the best I've ever seen. Okay, so the next question is from Sean McNulty, Magician. And Sean says, Hi Craig, I finally got a Mirage deck and I'm working on something. What's the best way to force two outcomes, i.e., reds and blacks or odds and evens okay well the easiest way to do that and i don't know what you've got in mind with the mirage deck it sounds interesting but the easiest way to do that is what i did in gossip uh my routine gossip that i bought out through alakazam uh i needed one person to think of odds i needed one person to think of evens um so what i did is i said to the first person hey uh, I want you to think of a number. Can you do that for me? Think of a number from one to 10. Have you got that number? Now, I don't know what it is. I don't want to know what it is, but I'd like you to think of a completely different number. So do me a favor. Is your, is your number an odd number or an even number? It's odd. So it's like one, three, five, seven, or nine, right? So I want you to think of an even number, either two, four, six, eight, ten. Fantastic. So you're both thinking of the numbers. You haven't said anything. By using two spectators, it allows you to force an odd and an even uh, number without actually needing to look like you're forcing that situation because it makes sense right and you can do the same thing with red and black you mentioned red and black so you'd say look i want you to think of a playing card can you think of any playing card that you want to you can fantastic and what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to think of a different card so do me a favor just tell me is your card a red card or a black card it's a black card so can you think of a red card please that's amazing perfect so now you've got into a situation where you've forced two outcomes by using two spectators. I don't know what you've got cooking. I don't know what the routine is. But if I was going to force two outcomes, uh, I would involve two spectators and I kind of do it that way because it feels like a very natural way um, to do that, if that makes sense. OK, um, and you can even engineer it using a deck of cards so for example and you don't need to do this but you know you could for argument's sake have it and this is not a great example but i'll, I'll give you as an example you could uh, if you wanted to force a court card on somebody uh you could say you could have the deck 
so that the court cards are at the top and the bottom and in the middle of the deck is all the number cards and you could say to somebody look I'm going to spread the deck out on the table and I would like you to pick a card and as you say that you put your hands over here like that so you're kind of covering the ends of the spread you're forcing them to go somewhere into the middle so they pick a card and you say have a look at that card and do me a favor if it's a number card we're going to we're going to think of a completely different card so whatever card you've taken out if it's a number card change it to a picture card if it's a picture card change it to a number card fantastic so now you're thinking of a completely random card and and obviously you've forced them into thinking of a picture card right so that's another example another way that you can go with that um but yeah i mean that's that's what i do really all i can help you with unless i get more information about what you're trying to do so if you do have more information please let me know Okay, so the next question again is from Pratek Kohli. How are you doing, Pratek? And Pratek says, what's the best impromptu magic mentalism material sources when you've got nothing with you? So for me, um, one of the best DVDs that you can get on this subject is Off the Cuff and On the Spot, which are both uh, by Greg Wilson. And I think they're considered two of the best uh, uh, sort of uh, instructional videos on impromptu magic, like some of the stuff. Questionable Trick, Trick Question by Greg Wilson is still one of the best impromptu uh, coin routines I've ever seen. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I've got some stuff on the net tricks. I've got a really nice one ahead thing that uses just a borrowed post-it notepad, which is great for an office. That works really, really well. Uh, I've got a routine that's going up on the net tricks, probably on the next upload. And it's, um, uh, just uses borrowed napkin and it's something I've done for years and it's really, really awesome. So you can have a look at that as well. That's really good. There's a few different things on the net tricks actually. Um, in fact, we should do a we should do an impromptu section on the Netflix. I think I'm going to speak to Jack about doing that. Um, but yeah, the Greg Wilson thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you've not really got any sources for uh, impromptu uh, magic, I'd go for the Greg Wilson off the cuff and on the spot DVDs and and check out some of Pete Turner's stuff because a lot of the stuff that Pete Turner does is is you talked about mentalism it's mentalism that you can do completely off the cuff you know it's stuff that you'll do that's very cerebral and propless so it just allows you to uh, kind of be anywhere and do it at, at the drop of a hat so i'd say uh, mentalism look at stuff from pete turner magic look at stuff from greg wilson okay so the next question is once again from david blaine and david says are you going to do a video explaining how or who got you into magic and who your all-time favorite magician is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's like a taught magic, right? Taught magic, I would say. Um, and, and at some point, I will do a talk magic, 100%. It's not going to happen anytime soon because there's a million other people I think that people need to listen to rather than listen to my story. I, you know, I talk enough on this channel as it is. I don't think you need to hear any more about my backstory right now. Maybe one day I'll do a, uh, maybe one day I'll do a talk magic. But right now, um, I'd rather focus on interviewing other people but um, if you want to know who my favourite magician is, it's either Rune Klan or Scott Alexander. Uh, both of them are brilliant. Okay, so the next question is from Dave Raves. And Dave Raves says, hello, friend. Uh, hello. Uh, my wife told me recently I'm going to be a dad for the first time. Congratulations. Being a dad was the best thing that ever happened to me. You can forget about everything else I've ever done or ever achieved. Being a dad was the best thing that ever happened to me. I cried for so long because this was something I've always wanted. My question is, what magic tricks would you recommend as a great way to creatively reveal the pregnancy to friends? Um, I'd be careful with that. Um, uh, uh, I, I'd, I'd be very careful about that. Um, and the reason I'd be careful is just because um, uh, you, you want to make sure that your wife's on board with this as well. You don't want to cheapen the announcement by doing a magic trick around it i've been hired a few times to you know announce a pregnancy or something like that as part of a show and i have done so and that's absolutely fine but you want to make sure that you're completely on board with it when you announce something by magic and that's something so personal you know none of your friends are going to go well you know that would have been a boring announcement but i'm so glad he did a magic trip because that made it 20 times better do you know what i mean less is more in this sort of thing and just saying hey you're not going to believe this. We're going to have a baby. Is it going to be fantastic? Uh, I think that's good enough, to be perfectly honest. Um, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to make a uh, announcement magically, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. One way that's really, really cool is getting some, uh, getting some um, Scrabble tiles, and uh, just uh, basically forcing the tiles. It's a boy. 
so you're forced to tab the the uh, the Scrabble tiles it's a boy now that could be with a flat change bag that could be by getting Scrabble tiles and gimmicking them up so they're double sided so you can do the old throw force there's a million different ways of actually um, forcing some Scrabble tiles but get the Scrabble tiles and 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 force it's a boy and then show that all the others are normal and then just lay these out face down and mark them so you know which one's which and then when you turn them over it's like it's a boy that's a really fun way of doing it that also keeps it really personal um yeah i mean i i, I can go through others like i've used digital force bag in the past and i've had somebody um um you know pick uh, a life event i've had somebody pick a male name somebody pick a female name uh, and I've had a prediction, and inside the prediction is a baby photo, a scan. So the prediction is given to somebody, and I use digital force back and say, right, you're going to pick a female name from this list of female names. You're going to pick a male list from this name, uh, this uh, this list of male names. You're going to pick a life event from this list of life events. Let's have a look. What did we get? Oh, we got uh, we got Dave. Fantastic. We got Sarah. Dave and Sarah. That's interesting because Dave and Sarah. That's you guys. Um, we got what's the life event? pregnancy oh dave sarah pregnancy okay that's interesting if i predicted that would that be good yeah and you open up the envelope and when you do the scan photos in there that's quite a nice way of doing it um but yeah I, just make sure that your wife's on board with it or your partner's on board with it is what i'd say um also as a, that you've got a second part to this question also as a father yourself i've always been curious as to where and how you found out about your wife's pregnancy do you feel comfortable sharing well with ryland um it wasn't a surprise because we kind of been trying in a kind of a not trying sort of way. I'm sure you know what I mean. And um, it was kind of harrowing, to be perfectly honest, because I didn't realise that she was pregnant. She, I, I didn't even realise that there was the, 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 that she was even like potentially pregnant. And uh, I came home uh, or she came home from work because she was a, a head teacher, a deputy head teacher of primary school. And I was a magician. So I was sitting at home doing nothing. And um, she came home and she went, I've got good news and bad news. She said, the bad news is I'm pregnant. Uh, sorry, the good news is I'm pregnant. And then she said, the bad news is you need to sort your shit out now. Because at the time, um, I just wasn't very good at marketing or anything. I, I, I just sat around all day doing nothing and then feeling bitter that I wasn't getting the type of gigs that other people were. And, and she gave me an ultimatum. She said, I don't want to go back to work full time. She, she was making most of the money in the, in, in the household. And she went, I don't want to go back to work full time. Uh, so you either make this magic thing pay for yourself or, um, you know, get a job. But either way, something needs to change. And you know, when you have a switch that flicks in your head, that was my kind of switch flicky moment. And I realized that that's when I needed to stop sort of messing around. And very shortly after that, I left the magic community. I left the uh, wizard product review. I uh, I focused on my business and, and I, I just focused on trying to make myself as successful as I could. Um, so that was that was the first one. And then Thea, um, it, it was it was a similar situation. We, we realized together because, you know, she'd missed periods and so on and so forth. So um, and we'd been kind of trying in a non trying sort of way because we thought two kids would be really nice. And, uh, and and we did the test together. And when we did the test together, it was positive and we we're all very excited. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the story. So I'm not very interesting. I wish it was more of an interesting story, to be honest, but unfortunately it's not. But uh, yeah, thanks for asking. So the next question is from Philip Austin. And Philip says, hi, Greg, happy Sunday to you. I know you're not 100% up to par present. I'm feeling a lot better, actually. But did you get anywhere with obtaining the journey by Matt Johnson, uh, the ACAN effect? I'm sure there must be a gimmick involved. Thanks for keeping the magic alive. Regards, Phil. No, I have been so ridiculously busy and also not very well and bed rest and so on and so forth. But Philip, I promise I'll look into it. Uh, I really will. I'll get onto it this week. I'm very sorry. Okay, so the next question is from Jonah Berg. And Jonah says, what's your top five wedding tricks? Don, 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 don. Okay, so the top five wedding tricks. These are just the first five that come into my head. Chris Congreve marketed a really great um, wedding trick that he marketed as a book, and it was very limited edition. Uh, and it's an incredible way to actually do a. Uh, uh, it's an incredible way to do a wedding um, to do a uh, to do, do, for the bride and groom. It's really really good. I can't really say much more about it. Contact Chris Congreve, but. It's kind of like, you know, it was very limited numbers and I don't want to talk about what the effect is at all, uh, but it was excellent. Uh, the second wedding effect that I would recommend is um, uh, Anniversary Waltz. You know, Anniversary Waltz is great. 
Um, I've been doing it for years. It always gets a really great reaction and it's the perfect giveaway. Uh, I would also add into that. So uh, number three would be point blank. Uh, if you don't want to do anniversary waltz, if you've got a double blank deck, you can do point blank and you're still going to end up with a, uh, a card that's written on both sides. So that works really well as well. In fact, I've got a script for weddings when I do um, point blank about, hey, love will always find a way to the top and and so on and so forth. So that works really well. Cuban bottle is a great giveaway for the bride. I give away a Cuban bottle at every single wedding gig I do to the bride and groom. And it's something that they always hold on to and they treasure. I know because I get their emails about it. Um, the one by Matthew Underhill is a great wedding trick. Um, which is where you they pick a two of hearts and you make one of the hearts move to the other end so it's like two hearts linked together that's really good um, John Allen has just recently bought out a nice wedding trick using hearts that looks really good so I'd say that as well is a fantastic trick um, yeah I mean that kind of covers it I think oh uh, one more thing I do I do a couple of different versions of a lottery prediction um, I, I, I do a couple of lottery predictions. If you've seen my Vanishing Ink Masterclass, you'll know one of them. And uh, one thing that's really nice is that you predict the lottery results. And uh, you predict the lottery results by giving them a... Um, uh, by giving them a lottery ticket at the beginning, so at the, uh, as a prediction, uh, and it's dated their wedding date. So uh, at the end, they get this lottery ticket dated on their wedding with all of the numbers that you've predicted. Uh, during the course of the presentation that you did to them, which was a Chris Congreve idea, and it's an amazing idea. Uh, that guy's a genius. So yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say any of those work really well as a wedding trick. Okay, so the next question is from the Drunk Magic Ukulele Player, and Drunk Magic Ukulele Player says, Hi Craig, just me again. I was sitting watching the bill on Monday night, and all of a sudden I thought I've never seen a brown balloon. Um, I was just wondering if you have. No, I haven't. Uh, if not, have you got any spare balloons, please? Could you try putting a blue balloon inside a red balloon and then put both inside of a yellow balloon and blow them up all together to see if it looks brown? I will I will experiment with that and I'll let you know what happens. I've got a feeling it won't, but leave it with me and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so the next question is from Jim Reaper. And Jim Reaper says, have you seen the video from, uh, have you seen the video from Unbiased Magic Reviews and also the video from Everything Pro Magic? Uh, both of them reference you. The Unbiased Magic Review video is about 25 minutes long and the other video from Scott is a short. Yes, I have. I have seen them. And you know what? I've got to a point. Let, um, you know what? Everybody makes mistakes. Um, me and, um, uh, me and, um, uh, David from Unbiased Magic Reviews, we've had this little feud going on and, you know, I've watched his latest video and, uh, he likes to paint out that, you know, I'm the bad guy in this whole situation and he's perfect and I've made mistakes. Absolutely. I've made mistakes and I've admitted to it. And actually the latest video I did was an apology and, uh, everything pro magic loves to talk about how I'm not a nice guy. And, uh, I, you know, the last video I had with him, again, I apologised. Um, they, everyone makes mistakes. They make mistakes. I make mistakes. I think that uh, anybody who reads the Magic Cafe thread between me and David, I think out the two of us, he comes across as more aggressive and angry than I do. But at times I've come across more aggressive and angry on videos than he potentially has. You know, nobody's perfect. Every day we strive to become better. I've chosen not to reply to those videos. I've chosen not to make a video because what I said in my last video is true. I'm done with it. I'm done with the drama. Over the last few weeks, the amount of drama I've had to deal with, with Michael Webber and Tim Trono and now him. I, I, I just don't need it anymore. I don't need it. If I continually go down the route of constantly trying to address drama that happens in my life online because of this YouTube channel, I'll probably end up quitting and not doing it. And I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that because I love creating. I love producing content for magicians. And I love answering people's questions and trying my hardest to put content out there that gives back to the magic community. So, you know, am I going to say that there's never going to be another controversial moment? No. I'm sure there will be, but I, you know what? If he wants to say that about me, let him. If he thinks that I'm not the nicest guy in the world, that's absolutely fine. I've got no problem with him. I'm a big fan of a lot of his reviews. And uh, if he if he wants to feel that way, that's great. Um, it, it, you know, it's it, it, he never once said in that video that he did anything wrong. He never actually said at any point that he was 
uh, in the wrong with things that he's done. So if that's how he feels, that's absolutely fine. I wish him well. I wish him the best. I don't want to get into it anymore, to be honest. I really don't. Okay, so the final question today is from Mark Thomas. And Mark says, in reference to getting into stack from Shuffle Deck, I bought Euphoria by Verne Magic and Adrian Guerrera. It was recommended by your least favorite, your latest favorite and biased reviews. Adrian uses a triumph routine to separate the two halves of the stack. And once in stack, he ends up with everything in suit order. The last effect only works using the moniker. It's very good. That sounds great. I'll have to look into that. The Patrick Redford download is called Thoughtmaster, which again is very good. I'm enjoying being an Netflix subscriber. And I'm also very looking forward to your latest stuff on Memdeck. That's great. It's coming soon. Thank you very much. And that really appreciate that source of feel we are. I'm going to go and check that out. So thank you for that. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Thank you once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Now, I'm going to be back again very, very soon. I'm going to be back again um, uh, with another video later on this evening. We're going to be back with a review show special, so look out for that. And uh, there'll be videos all next week, even though I'm probably not going to be around much next week. Everything has been put in place, so you guys don't really miss any content. Uh, but do me a favour, if you want to join The Netrix, please do so by going to www.thenetrix.com. You can go see what all the fuss is about and why everyone loves it, and you can go check out my online store by going to www.magictv.org. Thanks once again for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.